It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Falcons and the Bears on EA Sports. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to one of our favorite spots, Venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. This was the scene a moment ago as the Bears emerged from their tunnel. Ready for football are they, and ready for football are we as the Bears get set to match up with the Atlanta Falcons. Side, Charles. Set for football now on a sunny afternoon in the second city. And off we go from Soldier Field. Fielded right around the eight. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And they'll be let out by the man running the show, Charles, their quarterback. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way, and he sees himself in an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that, and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator say right off the top, he's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. The run there on first down gets him a yard to the 26. No doubt about it, really job there by the defense not allowing him to get to the perimeter but that means your defensive ends your outside linebackers the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback they also have to have interest in the running game as well and they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground from the gun it's far he completes it to julio jones and he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. First down, here's the run with Anderson. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And they go play action with Farr. He's going to air one out. And that nearly an interception here on this opening drive, but he gets a reprieve. It's third down. That sun's going to be a factor all game long. I'm not sure it made a difference on that one, but it's something to think about on all deep throws during this time of year. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. From the shotgun, it's far. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got a bump down, says the side judge, and that's good enough for a first down. Matt Nagy wants the officials to take another look at that one. He'll throw out the challenge flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. There we go. After reviewing the play, ruling on the field so the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Yeah. 
They'll run on first down. It's Anderson, and he'll take this one down to about the 40. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Still nine remaining on second down. To throw his far. He finds his man complete. It's Haynes. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 27-yard line. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. On first down. It's Anderson, and just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there, and just ran him down. Now far. Open man is Kyle Pitts, his tight end. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and it passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And that one goes incomplete on the draw. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. They're going on fourth down. It's far. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And the Falcons are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. What an excellent end result for them. But let's go back to the decision, first of all, to go for it all on fourth down. A lot of pressure on the quarterback's shoulders, but they knew he could handle it. Makes the right read there, gets the ball to his receiver. They get the first down. It's now first and goal. They'll run, Anderson. And a little bit of space there, takes it inside the five to the three. Give him four on the carry there, it's second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead, because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at them with the same play, the same set, and see if they can stop them. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. Scrimmage at the four. Here's third and goal. Here's Farb to throw. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. A great play there. There to make the grab. And the Falcons take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. Quite the drive there to get things started. They took up the bulk of the first quarter. And they end up in the end zone. And I love your last point. Ended up in the end zone. Because a lot of teams like those long drives, especially to keep their offense off the field, right? Keep the ball away from them. But they finished it with a touchdown. That's the exclamation point. Now flip it over defensively. They've got to slow that down somehow, right? Maybe they need to be a little more aggressive. Maybe a few more pressures towards the quarterback.
set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Hester going to decide against a return, and they will spot this at the 25. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. The former national champion at Clemson bringing him onto the field, and that's the signal caller, Deshaun Watson. And he's exactly the man you want control of your offense. Excellent arm, good zip on the ball, not afraid to use his legs when he needs to. And when he's excelled at doing is making plays when the first read isn't available, or when the pressure's about to get to him. Coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. After one, seven-nothing on EA Sports. Back in Chicago, ready for the second quarter. It's the Bears in possession as they've got it second and seven. Now Watson. Toward the sideline, and he will have the first down as he was able to keep the feet in bounds. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now a give, running left at Sears. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there, second down. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out. Pressure brought in. And Falcons get there for the sack. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack, and it'll lead to a third and long. I think that time he was maybe held on to it a little too long, CD, because after a couple of seconds in this league, you know those defenders are coming. And how many times have we talked about complimentary football? We usually talk about does the offense help the defense? Does the defense help the offense? I think in this case, does the quarterback help out his offensive line? You only have a certain amount of time to get rid of the football. They can only do so much. On this play, he took them to the limits. He's going to air one out. A fight for it, and this is caught. It's caught indeed. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A big play that time through the air. 38 yards. This offense has been slow to get started, but that play will certainly give them a little bit of life. Maybe the late wake-up call that they had been seeking. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. Flush to his right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Looking to throw again on second down. Watson, that'll be caught by Hester. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcon 16. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. 
Here's a give now to Sayers. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. This is a very impressive drive, especially when you consider where they started from, and now he set up first and goal. Yeah, it's a nice running right there. That's what got him the first down. But at this point, I suggest open up your playbook. You can call just about what you want. First and goal, and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage, back at the six. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Well, I know the defensive coordinator is going to be pretty excited about what he just saw there. Great knockback by their front. And now with the ball where it is, I would expect to see the offense throw the ball on second and third down here. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Check, check. Second down and goal, Watson. He'll drop this off to Payton. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. The catch good for six yards, but now it's third and goal. Now it's Watson. And that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. A great effort there. There to make the grab. And the Bears are an extra point away from tying the football game. Out comes the kicking team here for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that one a long 11-play drive, and the end result is a Bears touchdown. Seven here as the kicks away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out Let's as go. their drive will begin go. at the 25. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the win out of this offensive sales because they had it going pretty good last time, too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. First down, far. Caught on the right side by Jones. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Throwing his far. And that's incomplete. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. 
So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Favre. And he comes back with one complete. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Clock running, and the Falcons moving with a sense of urgency. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. send out their punter as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And there's a work of art right there. Out of bounds at the two-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. First down, Peyton, and he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, not a game that you're going to go crazy about, but when you start at your own two-yard line, any type of space is good for the offensive guys. Yeah, you just can't go backwards from here. They did it. Now we'll see if they can keep it on schedule here on second down. Final shot before the break. Watson over the middle. This one into the hands of Hester. Easy work. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7 seven, seven our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, Let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Falcons. And in a tie ball game, they've got to be asking themselves, what can we do to get this passing game on track for the second half to come? Meanwhile, for the Bears, we get a look at their numbers on the ground in that first half as they'll be looking to rev things up here in a tie ball game. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Seven, our score. Returnable here for Hester. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. And the Bears offense set to go to begin the third quarter. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. 
We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. A shotgun snap for Watson. Escaping the pressure right. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games. And we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. Where's 52? Watch 52. 52 is like... Back to throw, Watson. That'll be caught. It's Hester. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. They'll try a toss here with Sayers. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right, he's pretty much been completely neutralized. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Out of the gun, Watson. He's got a man. It's his tight end. That's complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 40. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 right at the 40. To throw is Watson. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet is just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. First and ten, Watson steps away to his left. And oh, he sheds a tackle. Now he's got some space. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. And that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Second down and three. Here we go, here we go. Yes, let's get it. Hey, Mike 52, Mike 52. Here's Watson. Got the connection here to Bourne. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. Doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. And I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All I thought about was I need one. Let's go get that. 
ended up picking up two. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. Here's Watson. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Third quarter, all tied up. This is second and ten. They'll try the right side here with Peyton. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? A field goal would get them the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. Watson. Uh, he's got it. Touchdown, Bears. A great play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears have taken the lead. I know we often laugh, and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is the absolute production on the field. The second touchdown of the game, and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. Extra point attempt here still to come. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. Team on the field now as they will send this one away. No run back here, down to a knee. And this drive will start at the 25. set to begin their next drive the Falcons offense at the line and this game was all square at halftime but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter and yeah, they need to take a good relaxing deep breath don't you think because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point but it's still too early to get there they can still run their offense plenty of time to get back in this game to start out here second and 11. Again, Anderson. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for him. He has just been completely taken out of this game. We're in the fourth quarter. He's single digits in the rushing department. And I know we look at him because the numbers do go to his production. But how about the guys blocking for him? They don't just have his number as a ball carrier. They've got the number of the offensive line and the other guys because they're getting to him before he can get started. The Falcons on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. He'll look to throw. A dump off to Anderson. And they work this well upfield across the 45. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there and for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. <laughs> On 
first down. It's Anderson. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. The throw over the middle taken in. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 31-yard line. Now that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. They'll look to throw. The left side completion to Jones. They'll contain him to just four, second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means after run extra plays, harder to move it. Now far. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Haynes. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. He's like moved early. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. To throw as far. Found his target, it's Anderson. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 12-yard line. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. It looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? From down at the 12, it's first and 10. From the gun, it's far. And a quick throw here, that's complete. A gain of six there on first. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down the wire. Tenth carry now for Anderson. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. Clock running, and the Falcons moving with a sense of urgency. He'll look to throw. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field, though, felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Meeting the tough yards, they run it with their full band. And he is not going anywhere. They stop it for no gain. 
They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And that will force a turnover on downs. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. This is Sayers, and he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as he'll get it with still a minute 20 left to go in the game. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. They run with Sayers. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 20. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Just around the corner, they go down to a knee. Watson, and that should just about do it for this ball game. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair. Low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeros. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And you know, it wasn't a shutout. They did give up the points in the first quarter, but second, third, and fourth quarter, they held them scoreless. Brandon, if you throw a shutout for quarters two, three, and four, you're going to win a lot of games in this league. And this felt a lot like, almost like if you say baseball, and the pitcher goes through the lineup the first time and the hitters get to see him. And then they come out after that and the bats start blazing, right? I think they 